What is going on everybody? It is Mace Fowler here on Unfiltered and taking a break from the normal editing all that stuff to talk to you guys something about very important about Retail Ready Community. No, Retail Ready Career Center, my bad. Um, I want to uh, give you my insight on the school and what I took away from it, my experience. And it's, it's a school that's designed uh, to train people to become HVAC technicians. Uh, HVAC is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, working with, you know, heaters and air conditioning. And of course the ventilation and stuff. So there's, there's, there's actually a lot that goes into it, but I'm gonna get to all this. I'm gonna be making these videos in segments and parts, uh, mainly because it is a big thing to talk about. Now there's a lot of pluses to this school if you're interested in going. Uh, and a lot of minuses. Now, this is, I guess, primarily uh, directed towards veterans because the majority of people that attend this school are veterans. And I, I do have my own takeaways from it, good, bad, and indifferent. And this, this is just from the perspective of a, of a student and what I witnessed while I was there. And I, I'm just gonna start things off with uh, the, the introduction, basically. Uh, in this introduction, part one, I'm gonna talk about my position in life right before I started going there and exactly what transpired the conversation and stuff uh, of what led me to decide to enroll. So to kick this off, basically it was, I believe it was, it was, I was going to Orange Coast Community College in Costa Mesa and it was, things weren't bad necessarily, but I wasn't doing ideal in school. Uh, I had a lot of, uh, uh, outside issues, I would say. Um, it was m m primarily my car. Uh, my car had, oh wow, over the last, ever since I lived out here, I've had an issue with a car. One one car or another. I have four cars in the last year and a half. It's nuts. But I always made it to school. But my grades were slipping. Um, there were some classes that were, I'm not going to lie, but out of my league. Um, I went to a philosophy class, which, good class. Holy shit was not easy because you cannot like make those teachers fucking understand shit like they they give you like hey here's what we're going to teach you here's the assignment I want you to do and a lot of it in the philosophy is is based upon the user it's like oh well this is what I took away from it right no it has to you have to reflect what he's teaching you so it's all fucked up anyway um, I digress excuse me so I'm I'm doing good enough in my communications classes, I'm doing decent in my um, general ed classes, like the English and stuff. But where I'm where I'm faltering is, is the other stuff that is considered general ed for my communications degree. Uh, the things that you know I could have chosen, but uh, it, it's just uh, I I I wasn't doing ideal uh, to the point where my grades were slipping. Because even though I was getting like B's and A's in other classes, the fact that I was getting like D's and shit in others was not fucking good at all. And it was, my grade point average was shit. Not to mention having to withdraw from some classes uh, just, just because it wasn't working out right. And so being a veteran, that was also going to it inadvertently. Uh, my GPA for two semesters in a row being as bad as it was. Because adjusting to college when you get out of the military is not easy. It's not impossible. There's a lot of people that can do it. But for someone like me... And, and the way that I learn and stuff, it, 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 oh god, it would have been so much better if I went straight from high school to college, but having that, that lapse break in between, your mind just kind of, you know, it refocuses. So, college, you know, the, uh, I guess the easy way to put it, it just wasn't for me. But I still tried nonetheless. So, um, because my grade point average was going down, the school was going to make it to where I couldn't go there anymore. And that was going to be coming up in the fall had my grades not improved uh, that semester. And I was b busting my fucking ass. Busting my ass. Uh, trying to make sure my grades were, you know, going to be top-notch to, to reflect. But there was um, that philosophy class. It, it's just no matter, you know, they're on time every single day. Um, fucking... Uh, turning in all the work on time and stuff. Uh, actually, yeah, there is more I can go into it. That teacher, that same teacher is actually really kind of shady with, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, I'll just say this. Uh, my philosophy teacher, he wrote our textbook. And the textbook was like $150. Not everyone gets a textbook. I got a textbook. but 
and then we had to rip out pages and hand them into him. That way we couldn't resell the book to the school so people could buy it at a discounted price. You know, that's shady as fuck. I'm not going to get into all that. But anyway, so grades were slipping. Uh, I knew the school wasn't going to allow me to continue going there if I didn't improve in that semester. And because of this one class, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I can do it. I'm going to keep trying. I don't know if I can do it. I need to figure something out. And at the same time, I had gone pretty much the entire time since I've been out without like a steady job. Like I'd done internships and stuff, but I, I needed a, like a real job. And I was like, and this was before, you know, any wind of like, hey, you can't come to school here anymore. You got to find somewhere else. And that was before even the VA was like, hey, man, what's wrong with your fucking grades? Um, this, this, you know, me, I was like, all right, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to go work at this movie theater. I'm working at the movie theater. And so all this happens, like, right after I start working in the movie theater. And I'm, so I'm working in the movie theater in, in Irvine. And I'm working uh, in school trying to, you know, do as best as I possibly can. So ultimately what happens is, um, because I had started working at the movie theater, uh, I still had my resume up on Indeed. Because I put my resume on Indeed, I put my resume up on, uh, on Monster, or Craigslist, like I just threw it out there looking for something for communications, like maybe some sort of um, uh, social media guru thing or whatever. Uh, looking to get into some sort of marketing, you know, uh, some something in relation that could lead me down the path of public relations, which is what I really wanted to do. And that just didn't, that just fizzled, it just didn't work out properly. So. But it was still there even though I was working at the movie theater. I never went on and took the resumes down. So about a week and a half, two weeks into working at Regal, which I should make videos about, Jesus Christ. Great employees, but Regal Corporation? What y'all doing, man? Y'all shady as fuck. So, um, what I ended up doing was uh, I'm sitting down at school one day and I get I get a fucking like text message. And I'm recording this on my phone so I can't just read them off. But basically it's like... I've been getting a lot of messages from a lot of different people, and you can tell some of them are shady. Like, hey, you can earn five grand a week from working from home. Just print out checks and mail them to people, or you know that you know that whole Craigslist scam shit. So what had happened was, get this text message like, hey, what about a job working in HVAC? And I'm like, that's that's like, what, air conditioning, right? And so I'm asking them like, well, what do you mean? And it's like. And he starts going to all the perks, right? It's like, oh yeah, you, you get commissions, you get paid substantially more hourly, you you get your own truck, you get this, you get that. And, and that's the number one thing that when I'm approached by a lot of these you know, people, it's like, don't tell me what I'm getting. Like, of course I wanna know that, but it, it's quid pro quo. What, what do you require of me to attain all this stuff? So essentially, I was like, uh, I don't really know too much. I mean, what do you? I don't know about this field. Uh, I'm not super mechanically inclined. Like, um, I have an interest in some of it, but not, you know, I haven't experienced too much of it in my life. So then he told me about this school, right? And he's like, Oh, I'm reaching out to you because you're a veteran. And I'm like, Oh, so this? Oh my God! I'm just like, So I listed that I'm a veteran on my resume, and in the tags and shit for it. And so you're preying on me because of my GI Bill. First thing that comes to mind. So get off the, uh, get, stop texting. While I'm texting with him, I'm going through online the Better Business Bureau. I'm looking at all these different Google reviews and stuff, and then I'm looking up this school, Retail Ready Career Center, and most of everything I saw was good. And you want to read the good stuff. You don't want to ignore the good stuff, but you want to look at the negative stuff. You don't want to. You can tell when you look at a negative review if someone's just salty, but at the same time, you can tell. You know, if like there was a legitimate grievance, you, you really got to pay attention to how it's how it's worded and everything. So I went through, and for the most part, it seemed good, it seemed golden, right? As far as the school was concerned, it seemed like the school was on par. Uh, hold on. Oh, sh she's eating lunch. Anyway, uh, God. Um. So what I ended up doing was I was like, all right, send me an email. Let me know, get some more information about this school, and, and we'll go. So I get an email from this guy. Uh, I believe his name was Kevin, uh, was my was the guy that was I was in contact with on my way there. And Kevin had uh, sent me this email, and I swear to God, like it came in my regular email folder, and you know, it said from Kevin at rrcc, whatever.com. I was like, all right, so this is legitimate email handle and all that but the way that the email like is structured it looks like literally spam like it's 
it's formatted all weird. It's got shit highlighted in weird places, stuff in bold, stuff in italic, stuff under like it's it's like all this like marketing buzz get in your face, flashy, telling you what you're getting, and it, and it, it's like, hey, you 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 come out, and you even and I end up talking to him on the phone, and he wanted to get me out there immediately, immediately. It's like, oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. So May second, yeah, we we start in, uh, we used to have a class come up on May second. I'm like, oh, I can't do like I'm still in school right now. I mean, do you have anything later like? Like in June, he's like, yeah, yeah, June, like 15th. And I was like, all right, sweet, I, I'll go for that. But as I'm on the phone with him, he's telling me, so you fly out, we, play, we pay for your flight. We give you an iPad, we give you, we pay for you to live at a hotel for the six weeks that you're out here. Um, you still get your BAH money uh, for the time that you're out. And also, every single Monday, you get $175 food stipend. And they also catered food and stuff there. And he's telling me about all these things, but not really talking about the program as a whole, you know, because I guess it's one way they're trying to get people on board. It's like they're pre like I still felt like they're preying on people that have no other options in life, which I was right there. And they just need that outreach. They Because I was at the point where I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I'm about to get, you know, not be in school anymore. I'm working at the at a job where I'm not allowed to work more than 29 hours a week because they don't want to give me benefits. I'm um, working at a place where I get $10 an hour and they even tax my tips. So it was, it was nuts. I mean, I, I guess that's normal. I don't know. I don't fucking believe in tips uh, to begin with. But you know, it doesn't mean I don't give them out. I'm just saying I just think the whole idea of tipping is retarded. But that's another topic. Uh, so, it was sketchy. I'm not going to lie. And I went with it. Because, like I said, I was one of those guys in that position where I I needed it. I needed something. I fucking, I needed, I, I had my dream, the thing that I wanted to pursue. I wanted to be in PR and the video game industry. And that's, that was my, that's been my passion. It's still probably always my passion is video games, the industry that I love the most. It's constantly evolving and all that. But I knew that I had to take care of myself. I had to take care of my son. You know, I had to make a good life for me. So how do I do this? I need to pursue something that's, that's going to be stable for me. And I didn't know how I was going to grasp any of it. I did, it was a new frontier. And I was like, you know... I, I don't know about this, but fuck it. What are my other options? You know? And at the same time, it's like I needed something. And there was a opportunity that was presented to me. You know? And it wasn't like I didn't put the work in. I reached out to the universe, the internet essentially. And the internet eventually reached back in such a strange way. And thus go, I go down the rabbit hole, which I will discuss in part two. Um, basically leaving... California and going to Dallas, Texas. Very riveting, very fun time I had out there. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment section down below. Uh, likes and subscribes are fantastic. And um, yeah, Mace Fowler signing off.